Hello. Welcome to my dark kitchen. Um, so this video is going to center around doing the concept builder on Coulomb's Law. Um, I haven't introduced to you guys Coulomb's Law yet. Um, and so as you can see, here's our presentation again. And I'm going to take the time to introduce to you guys Coulomb's Law. So let's take a look. So this is what we did the other day. Um, this is our activity. And you guys investigated the relationship between force and distance, force and charge, and force and charge sign. And the following relationships that you guys should have gotten in your conclusions was that force was directly proportional to charge. As you guys can see, I don't know if you guys remember this little uh, fish sign right here, um, but it means directly proportional which means that if I were to graph it, right, that I would get a linear graph, right? And then force is inversely proportional to distance um, between the two charges squared. Um, and so what that means is that if I was to graph force versus one divided by distance squared, then I would also get a straight line. If I just graphed force versus distance, then I'm going to get a line that looks kind of like that, right? And hopefully that wasn't too much trouble for you guys to determine. All right. Now, as we've done in the past, we take these relationships, right? And we sort of squish them together. And so this is a relationship that kind of brings us to what Coulomb's Law is. Um, you guys didn't have to um, come up with this equation by yourself. But this equation is going to be useful for us when we do the Coulomb's Law concept builder. It just says that you know if I have my force over here, then it's directly proportional to the charges, and then it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance. And so that's the relationship. Um, conceptually, that's all you really need to know. Um, later on in the week, um, I'm going to have you guys do some calculations with the equation. Um, and, you know, to make this into the full Coulomb's law, all you really have to do is add one thing. Um, and so this is the Coulomb's law. Uh, Coulomb's law just says that, hey, um, we have this thing called a Coulomb constant, because if you take uh, the two charges and you multiply them by each other, you divide it by the distance squared. If you go back to your simulation, that's not going to give you the force value. What you end up having to do is you have to take this value right here, 9 times 10 to the 9. Um, here's your units over here. Um, and then that will give you your actual value of force. Um, but we're going, to have, we're going to put that to the side for a second. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to tackle the concept builder and just see how it relates to something that you've seen before, which is the concepts of proportionality. And so let's go take a look. So I keep saying so a lot. So let's start this. I just said it again. Fun story. Back when I started teaching, um, I had a student that used to count how many times I said OK. Um, and I used to have another student who used to count how many times I said so. Um, and it was a lot. So I'm surprised I said it again. Anyways, all right. So, <laughs> God, killing myself. Objects one and objects two attract each other with an electrostatic force of 18.0 units. If the charge of object two is tripled, then the new electrostatic force will be blank units. Let's take a look at that whiteboard really quick. All right, so we're gonna call this number one. Oops, switch my color here. All right, that's not a very dark color. Maybe I can switch over to, ah, that's why. Well, I didn't pick a very thick pen. All right, it's number one. All right, so our force is going to be equal to 18 units. Okay. All right. Now we know 
that force is directly proportional to the product of the two charges. And so I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, this is Okay, so here we go. And now what it's saying is that the charge of object two is tripled. So what's going to happen to the new electrostatic force? Well, if we go back over here, let's say that we take the second charge. And we multiply it by three. Well, what's that going to do? Well. We're going to now have three Q1, Q2. And we still have the 18 over here. We can't just arbitrarily multiply this side by three. So whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So I'm going to take that three. There you go. Three, <coughs> three times eighteen. Three times eighteen is going to be the same time. Th same thing as. <coughs> God, this video. All right, it's going to be the same thing as nine times six. Um, just a little common core in my head. And so nine times six is fifty-four. And so our new is going to be fifty-four. Fifty-four units. If you triple one force, what's going to happen is you're going to uh, sorry. If you triple a charge, you're going to triple the force. Let's go over here and let's type that in. Data web. Nice work. All right. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the other ones. Okay. All right, so distance matters. Objects one and object two attract each other with an electrostatic force of 36 units. If the distance separating objects one and two is changed to one half of the original value, then the new electrostatic force will be blank units. Let's go back to our whiteboard. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this guy, load. All right. Example number two. Now I'll go back to my marker. Okay. So 36 units. Going to equal to our force. And our force is directly proportional to 1 over distance squared. All right. Now, the problem is telling us is that if we're going to have the original distance between the two, what will happen to the new electrostatic force? This is very similar to what we did with the universal gravitation. We're going to do one half here. And hopefully this is looking extremely familiar. Okay, we have fourth d squared. 1 divided by a fourth is just going to equal to 4 times d 
p squared. All right. So we have a factor of 4 right here. And if we're going to have a factor of 4, that means that we have to go over here and we have to multiply 36 times 4. I don't know 36 times 4 off the top of my head. Not shy to admit it. I've got to 144. So our force is going to equal to 144. And that should make sense, because if you're going to make the distance smaller, right, what we've seen before using this inverse square law relationship is that not only will the force increase, but it's actually going to quadruple, as we saw up here. That's what an exponential relationship is. So let's go back, and let's go ahead and type it in, so 144. Answer and data way. All right. Last one, wizard mode. Let's do this. All right. Objects one and object two <coughs> attract each other with an electrostatic force of 36 units. If the charge of object two is tripled, and the distance separating objects one and two is doubled, then the new electrostatic force will be how many units? All right, let's go ahead and let's refresh. And notice I'm still using a free whiteboard. All right, so our force, this is question number three. Okay, switch back to my marker. My user eraser. I get finicky about my pens. All right, so our force is, again, 36 units. Okay, and we know that force and our relationship is proportional to Q1. I'm going to squish them all together now. Q2 divided by distance squared. What the problem is telling us is that object 2 is going to triple and the distance is going to double. So we're going to have 3 times Q2, and then we're going to have two times the distance squared. All right, if we can do the math now, we're going to have three, and then we're going to have four on the denominator, because it's two squared, and then we're once again going to be Q1, Two divided by distance squared. So it's going to be 36 multiplied by 3 fourths. And so, again, I don't know that off the top of my head. 27. And there we go. Okay, so that is the Coulomb's Law Concept Builder. Um, I knew I know this video might have been a little choppy, so I apologize. Um, but you know, if you have any questions, just let me know. This is really similar to the universal gravitation equation, um, and we called this right the ability of uh, proportionality. Right, we're dealing with proportionality concepts of proportionality. Um, and just seeing, you know, if you change one variable, has that affect the other?
So let me know if you guys have any questions and I hope this video is helpful.